the civil rights movement. But we're, we're all law students here, so we're, 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 we're heading. Right. Well, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in interesting issues here, um, uh, and, and you always have, the big issues, of course, are going to be around, and I don't know if I call it civil rights per se, but it might, uh, around the internet, and <laughs> uh, uh, those issues are, are prominent. Uh, I think that around uh, the issues involving it all goes to the same section. But, but you know, it's because I was at a seminar this week talking about uh, the issues around reproductive rights, the rights of, of, of children, the rights of the utero. I mean, there's, there's some interesting rights that are going to that are going to flow out of that. Uh, there are going to be issues around employment, uh, always, um, as I as I see it. Um, uh, certainly, immigration. But I would only say to this to you that. When I started, the issues that I'm dealing with were not issues. <laughs> no one was suing the police. That just wasn't being done. And the employment law had just recently passed. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 had passed. And so I got out of law school in 73. It, it was just starting. So what I only say to you is that as you get out, there are new things. You should be mindful of new things that are coming about uh, because one, one or more of those things will suit your fancy. I don't know, you know, I don't know what it is. I didn't know that I, frankly, I did not set out to be, uh, and even deal with the issues of police. Um, it just came to me based upon um, uh, practice. So I don't know what the far-reaching ramifications of it are going to be. It's just that uh, I know that issues will surface, and, uh, and, and you look to see uh, if there's a wrong there somewhere. You know, and, and that, and maybe somewhere along the way you can do it. Now, a lot of people think, <laughs> I don't think this, but a lot of people think that criminal law is as an area. I don't think that. Um, there are interesting issues that are that are there. The whole because GPS is, uh, has set forth some very interesting issues about search and seizure, uh, but that issue is going to get resolved. Okay, the Supreme Court is going to rule on that this year. Uh, no, the Supreme Court has, has recently ruled uh, on that. That, um, but there'll be issues that will flow from it. So in, in criminal law, there are always issues around search and seizures, uh, and the scope of it, particularly with the internet and the new um, uh, technology that we have. And so what I would say is this: that you have to be mindful of the new technology as it flows out, because there are going to be issues um, that that are going to flow from that. Just a point. Uh, so the, the Bill of Rights. No, I don't think that. I mean, one thing about the Bill of Rights is it's pretty loose and it's, it has uh, expansive language, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's, uh, I don't see that at all. I mean, the Fourth Amendment is pretty clear. The First Amendment, although uh, interestingly enough, the first, and this is interesting, the First Amendment uh, uh, is, a, is, is broad, um, but there are always issues that have been developed. Uh, just right now, if you look at the, the, the legislation that's coming out of the Obama, on the health care. Well, they're fighting about this issue about religion. Uh, is this a, an abridgment of religion to require that the uh, various hospitals uh, include uh, some kind of contraceptive uh, type of care? Well, is that a religious issue or not? Well, that's what the lawyers have to do. The lawyers got to figure that out and explain to them that it's not or it is. I, I just see those kind of issues coming forward all the time as new technology develops, uh, new interests and new rights are, uh, are, uh, will get forged. Uh, but I don't think, I mean, there's always a question of right of privacy. <laughs> where is the right of privacy in the Constitution? Well, as William Douglas says, it's the penumbra of, of, uh, in the language, as opposed to saying there is. Well, you guys have gone through this, and so that's a clear deal, because the right of privacy is an issue. Uh, that's going to be there in many areas, although we take a lot of it for granted. But in the area, look, I was in law school when, the, when Wade versus, uh, Roe versus Wade was decided. I can remember that very day that my professor, Dr. Mr. Lowensell, Professor Lowensell, had a hissy fit. <laughs> he thought this was an abomination, he said. All right? Well, what are we doing now? We're still fighting that issue. And that's going to be an issue that's going to get fought. 
Uh, and that's where the political processes are important because whoever gets to decide who's going to be on the Supreme Court, they're going to decide that issue over the next five to ten years again. Uh, and with Ruth Ginsburg getting ready saying she's going to leave in 12, 15, critically important decision. So um, unfortunately, uh, who gets to decide ultimately is the one that, um, who, who wins in these issues. Okay. I was a prosecutor both in Chicago and Alameda County, Oakland. Okay. Um, you said you got, you referred later to, you know, stopping that line of work. I'm assuming that that meant you stopped being a prosecutor. Well, yeah. I mean, you, prosecutor's a public job. And I, and, and I, I was a prosecutor uh, a couple years in Chicago and a couple years in Alameda County. Uh, I, I thought it was a great job while I was doing it. I will tell you when I was in law school, if someone had said to me, John Burris, you're going to be a prosecutor, I thought they were, they were crazy, right? But once I went to work in Chicago and um, got to work with, in a big firm and got to meet people because I was doing pro bono work, I realized that that wasn't such an anathema after all. And, and, and for me, <laughs> I have a daughter now in law school and uh, I, she's going to work in a, in a DA's office for the summer and I, I've encouraged her to do that. I, I, I encourage um, everyone to one to get some trial experience, and you can do that in the public defender's office or in the DA's office. I thought the DA was a better thing for me because I wanted to learn how to put on a case. I mean, I'm thinking, as I said, choices you make. I, I think the choices I'm making is that it, I want to be able to present that case. Well, the DA teaches you how to present the case, and and so that's why I thought that was a good experience. Now, I did not like. I, I had a hard time sending people to jail, I mean, for long periods of time. That, that just was, or sending them for some dope case. I mean, I just couldn't, I just didn't like that portion of it. But I liked the trial work of it. But I also found that I could be benevolent as well. Because if I'm controlling that case, then I can decide whether, the, how much sentence you're going to get and, or not. Now, granted, you probably, I was able to do that because I was sort of treated a little bit special because of my background and all, but for whatever reason. I mean, I, I got special treatment. So I got to decide these things, uh, whereas some people, most people in the DA's office don't get to decide that there's standards by which they have to deal with it. But what I never did, got into the view that the most important thing was sending a person to jail for the rest of their life. That just wasn't my deal. Because people who are in the criminal justice system have problems, and I, wanted to be, I was mindful of how people can, bad things could happen to good people, how you can get into situations. Uh, and so, you know, I, I would not say not be a prosecutor. I would say it's a good experience to do. Uh, and I certainly did it and I enjoyed my experience. Uh, but it is yesterday's news, you know, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. So on the job application, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Right. Uh, it is uh, an issue that is, I think that uh, you have to put on your application that you have been convicted of a felony. Uh, there's a real fight about, uh, it's unfortunate, um, but that's on the application. Uh, if you don't put it on your application, because everybody does these background checks on anybody, uh, you will get fired. So that leads me to the other question, where are expungements going? Well, you can get expungements. Okay, that's a different question. Okay, now you're talking about a conviction that has not been expunged. You can get a conviction expunged. You have to go back to court and, and make a motion. I mean, whoever is involved, and I'm just saying, you go back to court, you make